Hello everyone and welcome back to some more Dead by Daylight, the board game for the channel and at a ratio of 2 to 1, Nia is the one who's being benched, at least for now, we can do a rotating cast, it's fine, especially if I end up painting more of the survivors, but Nia is on the bench, it was close between her and Ace and Meg is here to take her place, Meg Thomas is her full name and she especially annoys me because I guess by an accident, because it can't be on purpose, her model is positioned off center on her base which just is just maddening honestly so I'm gonna tunnel her so hard so she's gonna be the first to die. Anyway we're gonna be playing as the spirit again today just because I felt like it on the Macmillan estate map so as a refresher for what the spirit does let's go take a look at that. And here we are so the spirit's basic power is Yamako's haunting you discard a movement card except wait to interact with a healthy survivor or a prop in a space connected to that card's path so if you discard the green one you can interact via the green path and it has to be a healthy survivor so you can't pick up a wounded one with doing that but you can hurt a, a healthy survivor you can use two blood points on rancor when you move a wounded survivor in your space is forced to move with you i'm not really sure about the applications of that maybe we'll find some way to use it effectively one for haunted ground after survivor reveals a prop you can swap the prop with another revealed prop of the same category. By category it means like blue, red, gold, green and it just makes it, well actually not yellow because you can't do generators with progress, you also can't do a pallet if it's been placed on a path, a locker if someone's in it or a hook if someone is on it and all those things make sense. And then her free power is Spirit Fury. Each time each pallet you break magnifies your wrath after you break a pallet gain two blood points. So it's a bonus for her getting stuck by a pallet if that happens. So, simple enough, I'll get everyone randomised onto the table and then show you where they are after this quick word from my channel sponsor. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. And just like that we're back and we have to have this really pull back view just to show where everybody ended up. So Meg, the new survivor on the field, is up in the ancient tree near her. At the scrapyard is Jake and Ace and then unfortunately for Dwight he ended up down in the bottom right in the back lot which is also where I have started as killer. I put down my two cards so with that we're just gonna get into survivors turn one. And on that note we should start with Dwight to see where he's going. He can only leave via green or red. Not yellow because they're both one way in the wrong direction. Blue is also a no. Green it is. Now he can actually choose at the start of the game it doesn't really matter because, you know, nothing has been revealed yet so he'll take the most direct route. Oh, and he's found one of the two exits, so unfortunately for him that's his turnover. Nothing to interact with. We'll come over here and then we'll handle the other three. Let's start with Meg. Uh, I've turned her specifically so you can't tell that she's off center. I think, well, you kind of can, but it's less obvious. Yellow? Nope, it has to be green, red or blue. Red it is, so she's going down into the shack in the bottom left corner, taking this path here. She'll find... Oh! I was expecting it to be a generator, honestly. Well, that means literally every other yellow marker is generators, because the two exits have been found instantly. They're connected by a path that is breakable by the killer, this one you can just see here. Uh, okay, well, interesting. So the foundry basement and the shack are where the exits are. Let's move Jake. Red. He can go red. He would want to anyway because he knows there's no gens down there. This has to be a generator. So, we shall start with some gen work and yep, he gets progress. Once again, I forgot to open up the bag with the generator progress tokens. There we go. And then finally, Ace Visconti. Green. He can go green. He has to go green. There's no real reason to be down here. It's going to be a locker for him to hide in. Yeah, it is. Well, he's hiding in a locker because that's what aces do when they have nothing better to be doing. So I think I have a fairly nice turn one planned out, actually. My first card was green because there wasn't really any other option from where I am. At least green gave me options because there's two green paths. So I'm going to follow Dwight and I'm going to damage Dwight. But first, let's see if there's a hook here. Keep in mind, I can't hook him on the turn in which I've damaged him. Oh, there isn't one anyway. It's a hex tome. I am going to hurt him, though because that sets us up nicely for later. My other action, oh, as I just dropped that wound token on the floor, we'll use a second one. There we go. These bases. There we are. My second action was wait. Now, as I say, I wounded him this turn, so I can't hook him this turn. 
So, what I'll do is I'll use Yamako's Haunting. I'll discard my blue card because I played green and played weight, which means I can interact with someone along that path, a healthy survivor or a prop. I shall interact with Jake and I'll smack him. It's not even a bonus turn, it's just using her power to hit from range, I guess, because she goes invisible, I think, from what I remember. So, didn't do as much as I would have wanted. I wanted to find a hook, but wounding two survivors on turn one is pretty decent. So, we're into a new turn. Let's start with those wounded survivors, because they might end up getting healed. So, let's move Dwight first. Can he move blue? He can. He will flip this one round. But there is a generator there, so he will prioritise trying to fix that. If he gets a crit success, it's fully fixed. Nearly. Not quite, though. So that is two out of three. And then let's see where Jake moves. He can leave you any colour but yellow. Green, yep, okay, that's perfectly acceptable. He goes up here. It has to be a generator. And he'll try and repair said generator. He does. One out of three. Like that. Now we have to go down to the bottom left corner, which is a bit annoying. There we go. Ace hiding in the locker. Let's move him first. Green, you can move green and you're finding a generator. We know this for a fact. Because there is only generators left to find. And he'll try and repair it. And he does. Now if Meg follows him, she's got the chance to make a good first impression for them by getting a crit success to fix that generator fully. Blue, can't go blue, it's blocked off. She can go, oh, right, she's gonna try it. She sprints up here after Ace, she flips over a non red if it can be helped. It's an item, but prioritizing the generator, you don't have the stones to get a crit success, Meg. Yeah, you get a fail. So that's one blood point for me, and that's, uh, that's our turn. So for my first action, I am chasing Dwight. I picked blue, and if this isn't a hook, my plans are kinda in trouble. It is a hook, okay. Well, that means Dwight is going on that hook. I'm taking it, I'm ignoring the generator with two progress, but I might get an opportunity in a second to do something about that. So I take his sacrifice token, nice and early actually. It's a change. My other action, I, oh, oh, I, I was originally thinking to play weight again. I don't think I did, I played red, didn't I? Ah, oh, I did. If I'd played weight, I could have kicked the gen. Oh well. Can't go back now, I played red. So red does mean I could find another hook down here. Yep, okay. And we're gonna smack Meg. That's what you get for not being centered on your base. You get punished by a ghost. Now, if I was to take a third turn, because we have five blood points, uh, I could hit Ace, sure. I can't put Meg on the hook, because I injured her. I can't get to Jake, he's not connected either. Do I just have all four of them wounded? I could, I could like try and steamroll for a very quick win. You know, let's give that a go, let's just try and really mess them up. I'll spend four blood points of my five, thanks to Meg failing that skill check earlier, so I have one left. I'll play my weight card, because I haven't played that yet, I played blue and I played red, and I'll just hit ace, so all four of them are wounded. Nice and simple, like that. That gives me plenty of options for the next turn. At the end of this round, Dwight is on a hook, so I get one sacrifice progress for him still being hanging there, and that's it. So that's definitely the strength of the spirit there, but once all survivors are wounded, her power becomes a lot less useful because she can't interact with a wounded survivor from a distance. So anyway, there is set movement. Jake is going to come down here and is going to rescue Dwight. Like this. And let's see where they run. Let's start with Dwight. He is running to the red, which you know, is perfectly safe down here, I'm sure. And Jake is running to the blue. He's got two choices. It makes much more sense for him to run up here. Uh, his initial move is to here, so I presume he would flip this. He found a pallet, so he's going to block that path there. I, I go back and backwards and forwards on whether a save is allowed to do that, but on the initial move to where the save person is, I think you do. And then down here. Ace, and then Meg, just go left to right. Green, you're back down here, buddy. And you flip this, there's a second locker. He will hide in a locker. And then Meg, if Meg goes down there, she's hiding in a locker too. Red, nope, she's hopping the pallet. 
flipping the last icon up here, which is a bird, and oh, she can fix the gen. I was going to say she can take an item, but no, she can just fix the gen as long as it's not a second fail for her. Okay, generator's done. One out of four, completed. So, for my first action, I picked red. No, I picked white. Kind of forgot that, honestly. Well, Dwight, you really shouldn't have come down here, but he is the least dangerous person for them for me to have grabbed. I'm going to put him on the hook, obviously, because I already have his sacrifice tokens, so he's only given up one at the end of the round instead of two in total, so probably a good thing for them. My second action was red, so that pallet coming down, it stops me, I smack into the pallet, I break the pallet, but Spirit Fury kicks in and I gain two blood points. Still not enough for a third turn, however, because that puts me at three in total. So nothing else I can do. Um, yeah, there's no, there's no need to use any of our other powers yet. So it's just over to uh, the survivors. No, I was forgetting something. <laughs> Dwight's back on a hook. It's one more sacrifice token. Every time I forget the end of turn sacrifice progress. A new round begins, and Ace has got to get out of that locker and be a hero. He is rescuing the white. There is one icon left to flip here. It is. Oh, there's two items there. Well. They might be back because there is a generator. So Ace is scampering to blue, so he's running up here. And then Dwight is scampering to blue. Makes sense, they run away together to potentially heal in the future. And then we move up here for Jake and Meg. Let's start with Meg, in the middle of the map in the foundry ground floor. Blue, yes, she can go blue. Up here, we know it's a generator and she'll try and repair it. She's been one hit, one miss so far. Ah, she crit successed. Okay. Well, Meg. That is two out of three on that gen. And then finally for Jake. One of the few times where a yellow move would be viable. And not only viable, but good because it put next to a generator that a crit would fix. But he's jumping red. So he's going down to the coal tower ground floor. There's no yellow here, so he'll flip this. And he's going to pick up an item. Which is always annoying because oops, I just flipped the generator. Didn't know they could do that. Let's just grab a random card from the item pile. He's picked up whatever this is. It's the dull key. Discard this at any time to allow any survivor to reroll any die. Any survivor. So basically, the next time they roll a fail, they're getting a reroll. I'll keep that somewhere where I can see it. Basically, in the middle of the map to remember it's still there. Anywho, let's get stabbing. My first action was blue, so they should not have run that way, but they did. I'm hoping there's a hook here, not a totem. Ha. That makes the plans awkward a little. Oh, wait, wait, I could use her power. Hang on. After a survivor... Oh, it's when a survivor reveals a prop. Not when I do it. Okay, never mind. I thought that, was, that would have been good if I'd swapped the hex totem and the hook, because the hook's unoccupied. Such as it is, I'm going to interact with Ace, and I'm going to carry him to the hook. So, I've just got to not get a crit on this die. I got a crit on that die. Could have re-rolled it as well, I guess. So, never mind, I immediately just drop him right there, and that ruins that action. I don't think I moved to the... Actually, is... do I still move, or do I drop him there? I need to double check that, because it matters for my second card, you see. Carrying a survivor. Let's see. Sacrificing is where it is. You don't use movement cards for this, the survivor does not flip. Yep. If the killer chooses a number up to four, or forced to carry a survivor to roll that many skilled dice, if any of these show great success, the survivor escapes and is put down in their space. If none of them do, the killer may move up to one space. Okay, so the move only happens on the success of not rolling a crit. So, yeah, they're still stuck there. Because it does matter, my other card was wait. Now, I presume that means I can try again. Right? <laughs> I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to do that again, because it's a new action. So I'm going to try and carry Ace again, and see if he breaks out again. He doesn't. Would you use the dull key on that? Um, For a 1 in 6 chance, sure. Well, it'd be better to fit on a fail on a generator, I, I think. I think like you, you play the survivors as if they're trying their hardest to win. The dull key for this isn't worth it. So, yep, he is getting carried exactly one space. And he's giving up his sacrifice token, and then I'm getting another one for ending the turn with him on a hook. Oh, I accidentally took his when I took Dwight's. There we go. So, yeah, I don't have enough to buy a third turn, so it is just down to one more sacrifice token. 
And that actually already puts me three away from winning. And now it is Dwight's turn to come down here with nothing to flip. And he... Oh, I'll just move myself back a little bit. He is rescuing Ace. They're just swapping time on the hooks. That's not a safe thing to do. Dwight's going to run yellow. No, he is not. He is running green. Which is down to the shack in the bottom left corner where one of the exits are. And then Ace. You ideally want to go in separate directions this time. Red? Yeah, okay, they did. So Ace is coming to the foundry ground floor. Then we'll go over here and see where Meg ends up. Green? Uh, yes, you can go green. It's a generator that hasn't been found yet. We know it is a generator though. So she will try and repair that. Oh, she crit success twice in a row. This is why Meg must die. So that's two generators on two out of three progress now, right next to each other, and Jake can get to both of them. If he gets a red or a blue, and he can only leave via red or blue, so he's going to attempt to fix one of them. Blue it is. He has to flip something as well. This is a locker, but he's going to just try and fix that gen. And he succeeds, so this gen is done. Just like that, they're 50% of the way there. They still have time, because I, I think I am going to get someone on the hook this turn, but I don't think that's going to be enough. I, I would need to get two on the hook. Especially if one of them was someone I haven't hooked yet. I did pick red though, so unfortunately for Ace, I correctly predicted where he'd run, and I'm putting him right back on a hook for my interact. Sorry Ace, you're giving up another point at the end of the round. My other action was blue. Now that doesn't take me... Actually, I have a choice. I, I didn't realise that. I could go down the way to the foundry basement where there's a hex home to get some blood points. I am going to go up here. The, uh, this path here. Flip this, hope it's a hook. Ah, it isn't. And I'm going to kick the gen to get rid of that progress. Just to, oops, just to impede them a little bit. End of the round, I get a sacrifice token for Ace being on the hook. And that means I'm two away from winning. Well, we start this round with a difficult choice for the survivors. And this is where you have to kind of, again, just play the AI like it's trying to win. Because none of them can get to Ace in a, in a single move. So, there's no known crows that would also give them a bonus turn. There could potentially be in the coal tower ground floor here, but don't know for sure. So, Dwight is going to be the one to move towards him because he has a guaranteed path. Which means he's moving from the shack via green, who's he's just out of sight down here. Moving via green to here, he'll loot an item. Oh, actually no, there's a generator. He can still work on the generator, and then that means he can take red next time and save Ace. And he'll need to because that'll put me one away when this round ends. Now he did a fail. The dull key will get used up. Because it works on any survivor it says. And he'll get a reroll. Ooh, so close to a crit success. So that gen's one away and he is on his way to rescue Ace. Speaking of Ace, no turn for him because he's on the hook. And these two up here. Let's see where they're going. Starting with Meg. Red. No. Has to be blue, yellow or green. Blue it is, so she's right back down here. She's found herself an item. Okay. She shall loot an item, and the item she's discovered at random is a different type of key. It's a skeleton key. Discard this at any time to allow any survivor to reroll any die or gain more blood points. Well, again, it's just a reroll then, since AI does not generate blood points. And then Jake. Blue. He's, they're just following each other. He's coming down here. Flipping this, it's a pallet. The most annoying place for the pallet will be there because that blocks me. But although I will get blood points if I break it. So my first card was unfortunately red and that means I smack into the pallet, I break the pallet, my turn is lost. But Spirit Fury kicks in, I get two blood points. So it gives me, I'm back to five. Second action, but it has to go from here, is blue. Thankfully there is a blue path I can take. It doesn't really get me anything though. I can't loot this for an item, I can't interact with anything. I can interact with the crow for one blood point, I think, as the killer. Let's just see again. Remove the crow. Oh yeah, it also denies them the chance at a second turn. So you know what? That actually is kind of worth it. So let's get rid of that. I get one blood point. Bring me to six. I'd only be able to play yellow or green. Neither of which get me the kill or secure the win. End of my turn. 
I get one more sacrifice token because Ace is still there, and that puts me the one away from winning. Uh, he's about to get rescued, but as long as on my next turn I put somebody on a hook, I win. If it's Meg or Jake, I win instantly because I get their sacrifice token. So it's not looking great for them. I need a hero plays in Dwight's head as he arrives over here, gets Ace off the hook again, and they're both going to run. There's nothing to flip. Start with Dwight this time. He's running blue. There is two options for blue. He will run away up here, and if Ace gets blue, he will go the other way to split up the potential threat. So he did. So he's running down to the foundry basement where nobody's really spent much time, although that is where one of the exits is. So it's over to Meg and Jake, and they're needing to actually like do something. <laughs> Fix a gen, stop me from winning. Meg's gonna going to go, rather, green. No, you're not. Not from there, you're not. She can go... No, she can't do that either because it's, it's blocked off until I do it. Red. She can choose. She will go after the generator with Dwight up here and she will prioritise repairing the gen because that's how you win. She rolled a fail, so there goes the key to get a re-roll. She's good at rolling fails. Uh, never mind, I like Meg and her weird off-centre base. And she got a success that time, though. Oop. And Jake, if he gets red, he could potentially crit success. Oh no, okay, there's a chance. You're saying there's a chance, although there's a nice meat pile here for the killer to go after. Don't get a crit success. Oh, he didn't, okay. Still success though. So that's it, two out of three. And that's that. So unfortunately for me, I think I misjudged the direction they'd be going and I put green first. Yeah. The hang on, what was my other color? My other color was red, yeah. So I'm just trying to see if I can get to them via a green path, but I don't think I can. No. They're they're gonna get away with that, aren't they? Okay, so I have to move green. There is only one well, there's two ways I could leave. I'm just trying to think, because I can buy a third turn. Is there any way like let's say I'm in up here, red would get me up there, that's no, oh, then I'm too far away from him ace. Green down to here, and then red takes me here. Can't replay red. Yeah, they're going to get another turn. They're, they're, I can't do anything. So move down here. Hope that this is a hook. I guess just so that we have one. Yeah. Okay. I gave them an extra turn by misjudging where they'd run. I didn't expect three of them to go up there. And then, as I say, I played red. Oh yeah, for my action for that turn, uh, nothing. <laughs> There's nothing I can do. So red. We're coming over here. One icon left in this area, and it is a hook. There's only one hook undiscovered, so that's nice. We've got lots in this area where they are. If I buy a third turn, I can only play yellow or blue. Neither of which get me the kill. It's much, it's, it makes more sense to wait for one more turn. All right, I've made my gambit. My cards this turn are white and yellow. Let's see if that pays off. Uh, let's start with Ace to the bottom of your screen. Where is he moving? He is moving green. Yes, he can. And there is a generator down here that hasn't been discovered, so he might as well try, why not? He is actually safe for once from my ire. The die rolled off the table. It is a success. Usually I don't count if it falls on the floor, but I can see what the result is. So fine, he got a success. It was a four. Then the other three up here. We'll just go left to right. Jake, yellow. Yes, for once you actually can take a yellow path. He'll flip this. It's birds, but he'll choose to interact with the gen because if he gets a critical success, it's done. He got a fail. He spent too much time around Meg. He caught whatever she's got. Speaking of Meg, she can go that way and try if she gets a yell. No, nope, green. Yes, she can go green. She will come over here. She'll flip this. There's two lockers. She'll hide in a locker. She learned from the best. And then Dwight, red. That takes him down to where I am. And that just cost them the game unfortunately for them. In fact, we might as well just carry on. As I said, my first turn was wait because I hoped someone would random down there and there's a nice lovely hook there. Wait. Hello, Dwight. You cost them the game. I think you were on the hook like three times, so I guess that's fitting. He already has his token gone though, so it technically doesn't happen until the end of the round. My other card, as I explained, was yellow because I thought, oh, maybe someone will scatter into the foundry ground floor. Smash through the wall here. Come there, there isn't actually anything to do here. Can't interact at range, so I wouldn't be able to do anything. I could, like, if I just wanted to be really evil for no reason, buy a third turn, play my green card, come over here, hope this is a hook. 
it isn't, but interact with Jake, carry him one space and put him on a hook as well. And then actually I just win because his token hasn't been taken yet. Yeah, well, there you go. So with Jake going on the hook is actually what cost him the game because I instantly get his sacrifice token. Like that. At the end of the round, I would have got two more. What we he just managed to do that one percent chance to get off the hook by himself apparently. But that still does give me the win. So the spirit is triumphant this time. I think she was one of the two I had that mini loss streak with, wasn't it? Maybe not, I don't quite remember. It was maybe the nurse and someone else. But either way, I definitely had a loss streak with a couple of killers. It might have been her, might not have been, but she got her revenge either way. Meg got away scot-free, didn't even get her sacrifice token. In fact, in the end, hers is the only sacrifice token I didn't get. So is it truly a win? Who knows? We'll just have to try and kill her harder next time, I guess. That is going to do it for now. I'll try. I, I know I mentioned painting up the Oni last time. I still haven't gotten around to that. I'm going to try that because that's the next killer I want to play as. So hopefully we'll see him in the next video and see how he performs on the table with his big smashing club and whatever else. Thank you for watching this video though. As always, I hope you enjoyed. Please do remember to share your support if you want to see more from this series. And if you want to support the channel in general to keep it all possible, can, uh, consider pressing the thanks button, becoming a channel member, or checking out the channel sponsor. If you buy anything via the affiliate link, I get compensated, so both get something out of it. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day, and see you next time for something else. Ta-da for now.